Mythic Battles was first a board game, a traditional board game, released in 2012, uh, but without miniatures. Um, and after Kickstarter came along and had the success uh, with all the miniatures game, uh, the author and myself thought that it would be nice to relaunch, reboot this game with all the means that Kickstarter allows. And this is how it all started. Um, shortly after we started demoing the game, uh, we've done to this day, uh, over 800 demos, more than 2,500 people have actually played and tested the game. Uh, we, we received a monolith who said that they would be interested in co-publishing the game with us. We immediately said yes, and the game entered a bigger dimension. What is Mythic Battles Pantheon about? Well, it's uh, a game set in a Greek mythological world where titans were unleashed by Hera, they left Tartarus and they launched a massive attack on Olympus. The only way uh, the god could uh, push them back was to unite. So they all united, including Hades, god of the underworld, who was no longer guarding the underworld. So that means not only the titans, but also the monsters you all know, like uh, Hydra or Cerberus or Nemean Lion or the Minotaur, they all were uh, revived because they left the underworld and they're back. Same with the heroes. The, the heroes were in Elysium and they could climb up the river Styx and now they're back. So after this battle, the, the god finally could push the titans back, but many died and uh, many were weakened. Uh, they fell in a catatonia and when they woke up, uh, they realized that they had become mortal. The only way for the god to to gain back their power is to absorb some uh, gems of divine energy called Omphalos. But they know they won't be the only one looking for these gems. Uh, the Omphalos are made up of the, the dead god's energy, uh, crystallized energy. The gods know that they won't be the only one wanting them, and uh, so they will gather and recruit the, the warriors among the survivors uh, on this uh, cataclysmic world, uh, but also the heroes and the monsters. So uh, in this game, you, you play a god, a recently awakened god, and you will uh, recruit your warband, uh, your army. Uh, the game can play one versus one on one, or one uh, versus two people, uh, two versus two, or one for all uh, in three or four player mode. So you, in the, the skirmish mode, you just open the box, you draft your god and your warriors, and then you play. Uh, the draft system is based on a, a budget. You have some points, and with these points, you can you can buy uh, monsters, heroes, or uh, troops, uh, and uh, and then once this is done, you play. Uh, usually, you have two two victory conditions. You can either kill one of the gods, uh, the opposing gods, or you can absorb a certain number of Omphalos. So this is the first, uh, the, the first way to, to play the game. There's another uh, game mode, which is a scenario-based game mode. In this scenario-based game mode, it's more storytelling. It's more, uh, you don't necessarily play a god, you could play just a hero. Uh, there'll be some, a certain number of scenarios that are all, that are all linked uh, to, to one, one to the other. Uh, and so it's a completely different feeling. Uh, the game plays with cards and with dice. Um, and in both uh, the cards and the dice, you have a way to control randomness. With the, your card, uh, each unit you recruit uh, is represented by some activation cards. Each time I play an activation card of a god, uh, I will play this god, I will activate him on the board. Uh, if each time I play uh, an activation card of a hero, I will move and uh, this hero, activate him, move him and make him attack if I want. But you also have some art of war card. Art of War cards are the Joker cards. They can allow you to uh, play a second different activation um, unit, or they could allow you to uh, draw some cards. So to control randomness, same with the dice. We have a system that allows you to 
take out, take away any one dice to add plus one to the result of any other dice. So with this system, you have a little more control of a randomness. You can usually, you have choices to make. You can usually either choose to inflict one wound for sure, or you could try to get several wounds, but you're not certain you'll have them. So it's not just rolling the dice and see what, what happens. It's actually making decisions when you roll these dice to do the best, uh, to have the best result. How far are we on the project? Well, as far as art and sculpt is concerned, everything is ready. We have the artwork for everything. All the, of course, the, the main box, all the stretch goals, all the add-ons, uh, everything. And same for the sculpts. We have even more uh, artwork than our expectations, just in case uh, the Kickstarter would go really high. And if we reach uh, these, these height, then we'll have the sculptors uh, work during the Kickstarter campaign to make sure that it's ready if we ever reach that point. We have done a lot of work on the molds also. Uh, the We have the molds for the core box. Uh, actually, we went to Essen and people could play with the plastic uh, cast, the first plastic cast that we got. These are not even the final ones, but they are already very, very cool, very detailed, and the response was incredible at Essen. People really liked them. What we did on the, our plastic models uh, is that we added um, a new technology. It's called hardcast. So not only are the miniatures more detailed because we, we molded them directly on the master uh, m miniatures, but we also did all the, uh, the weapons in a different plastic. It's, uh, it's called an ABS, so uh, the, the spares, the, the swords, all the weapons that could bend and that you can find uh, bendy on some other miniatures game. Well, they won't be bendy on ours because they're made of hard plastic and they were uh, glued in uh, the factory. So this makes a whole lot of a difference. Um, the layout for the, the rules is done. So during the Kickstarter, we'll show uh, the rules, a PDF of the rules. It's still a better version, so we might still work on it uh, afterwards, but it's very, very detailed and uh, very comprehensive. Our figures are so detailed that it would be a shame not to try and paint them. You don't have to. Some people, you could just simply pay, play with the, the, the models as they are. But if you want to paint them, we had uh, the idea of providing a painting guide uh, for each step, step by step, uh, done by a wonderful painter called Martin Grandbarbe and another one called Vlad Lyon. So you could, uh, we'll include this painting guide in the uh, scenario campaign uh, book that we will provide during the Kickstarter. So all those paintings are done uh, and we can show them during the Kickstarter. The layout for all the, the box material is done uh, and that includes uh, the uh, 3D elements that you can assemble in uh, cardboard elements. Uh, all the boards, we have four different boards, all the cards, 146 cards, uh, all the, the punches, uh, the tokens, everything is, is ready. Uh, we are at this moment working on uh, the layout of the uh, add-ons, that means the expansion, uh, the uh, op optional buys, uh, and our layout designer will be working on this during the Kickstarter campaign. We have introduced the dashboard, the character dashboard. Uh, if you followed us uh, during our Mythic tour, which is the, the, the demos, the series of demos that we ran uh, worldwide, you can see that we were working with uh, some, uh, we were using some uh, dials. The feedback we got was that although they liked the dials, they didn't like the fact that you had to turn the dial to read the powers of the, the model uh, and that you you couldn't anticipate uh, how the uh, the statistics were going to evolve uh, during the game.
because you had to turn it to see it. So we completely redesigned uh, the, the character sheet. We call it a dashboard. So in this dashboard, they are rectangular. You can see much more uh, statistics. You can see everything. You have a bigger art. And of course, uh, the, uh, the powers are written on the, on the front side. And we have a ruler, a plastic ruler, that you can lower uh, that you can lower to read uh, to indicate which line of statistic uh, your character is at. But you can also see uh, how it's going to evolve in the game. So it's uh, strategically, it's, it's better because you know if I inflict one wound, well, his defense is going to lower, so I might as well attack this guy. The Monolith and Mythic Games teams are completely ready uh, and we will be answering you uh, on the Kickstarter forum, uh, on our uh, website, on our uh, Facebook page, every, and on the, uh, the different forums that we know. But there will be an official uh, person, an official voice uh, talking to you and that I'm going to introduce. Uh, we'll call him the voice of Olympus. And this guy, um, you've probably heard of him if you're into Kickstarter and maybe Games Workshop. Uh, this guy is called is Jake Thornton. Jake Thornton used to be a White Dwarf editor for many years. He used to work for Games Workshop as a game designer too. For instance, he designed the, the game called Lost Patrol that was recently uh, re-released -re again. Uh, and, and, is, and is available now. And he also worked for Mantic uh, as a, you know, for, for their Kickstarters, games like Dread Ball or Dead Zone or Dungeon Saga uh, were all designed by him. Right now, he's played the game. He really likes uh, Mythic Battles and uh, he's part of our team uh, as the voice of Olympus. And he wants to do something a little different than what uh, community managers usually do. Instead of just saying and making comments and answering questions, he will do that. He wants to provide something uh, during the whole month. So you will get uh, like a little magazine, you will get some something to read, uh, to discover, some surprises that will be published almost every day. And uh, so check, check it out. Mythic Battles Pantheon will be launched on Kickstarter Tuesday, November 1st, uh, 2 p.m. EST, that is uh, Eastern Time in uh, the United States, or 8 p.m. CET, that is uh, for Europe. Um, the pledge, the, the base pledge, uh, will cost $100, uh, and in, for that you will get uh, all the content of the core box, that is 30, 37 miniatures, 20 different models, 9 uh, big miniatures, uh, uh, on, in these uh, 37 miniatures, you'll have 4 uh, different boards, hard board, uh, hard cardboard uh, boards, uh, 146 um, cards, You'll have the Omphalos, uh, you'll have uh, punches, uh, 3D boards to assemble, uh, and of course, you'll have all the stretch goals that will be unlocked, and we hope to unlock a lot of them. So that means for $100, you will have this, plus everything that uh, will be unlocked. But that's not all. Uh, we, uh, we have a Kickstarter exclusive for uh, our backers. And this Kickstarter exclusive will be nothing less than a new god. Yes, we are going to provide Apollo as part of uh, this box. Apollo is an amazing god, very, very interesting to play. He brings a totally new gameplay in the game, and you have to see that. Let's have a few words on the early birds. For those who are not familiar, early birds are a promotion that we offer to our first backers, we decided to have 1,000 early birds. So for those one first 1,000 backers, uh, you will only pay $90 instead of $100. So just be there on time.